Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we are continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at program flow instructions. In this video, we're going to look at how to implement another common C technique for looping called a for loop in assembly. So just a reminder, <clears throat> a for loop is a loop that executes a certain number of times uh, primarily. And what you do is you provide three arguments for the loop, <clears throat> and it is... The first is going to be a loop variable, so like i or j, and and its starting address. So you, so you will not address, but its starting value. And then you're also going to provide how you will uh, alter the loop variable in the loop. So it might be increment by one, decrement by two, <clears throat> and then you provide the final value for the loop. And what happens is that the loop variable will be automatically altered each time through the loop. And this gives you the ability to have a loop execute a predetermined number of times. Let's take a look at the syntax for a for loop uh, for a little example that we'll do here. And here it is. So consider this, this top for loop. The syntax is for, you got the curly brackets for C, in C, and then you're going to do some statement within the loop. But at the top here, notice that the three arguments provide how you're going to uh, mess with the loop variable as you go through this loop. The first field is going to be its starting value of the loop variable. And while you, when you do that, you also define the loop variable. So in this case, it would be i. <clears throat> and, and these are integers. And then at the, the middle uh, argument is going to be the final value of i or when, when you loop as long as this condition is true. Uh, and this kind of sets like how you're going to, how long you're going to loop through. And then the third one is how you're going to alter the uh, loop variable each time through the loop. So in this situation, the loop variable is i and it's zero. And then what happens is it goes through the loop, i is zero. Then it comes back here, it increments i, so i is equal to i plus one. So the next time through the loop, i is one. And then it goes through again, two, and then three, and then four. And each time it goes through the loop, uh, it checks against this Boolean condition. It is i less than 4? So the first time through, uh, i is equal to 0. It was true that it was less than 4. And then the next time through, 1 is less than 4, do the loop. 2 is less than 4, do the loop. 3 is less than 4, do the loop. 4 is not less than 4, get out of the loop. So it ends the loop. So this, this example will loop 4 times with i uh, going from values 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, let's code that up in assembly and see how we can do this. So Go ahead and do a new CCS project and go ahead and check the uh, check that the MCU is correct. And let's call this ASM underscore flow underscore four loops. Do an assembly empty only. And here we are. OK, so I'm going to come down here <clears throat> once again. I I'm going to have some uh, I'm going to have a variable that I want to assign to. And so let's go ahead and set up our variable uh, first. So I'll come down here and I'm going to put data allocation and then I put the directive dot data and remember that means uh, go to data mem and then I'm going to do dot retain and that's going to be leave this section and then I'm going to come down here and I'll do var one and I'll do dot space and two. All right, so I just reserved a 16-bit word in data memory, and it, it is going to be at address 2000 because that's the start of data memory, okay? All right, and let's go make a for loop. So I'm going to come back up here, and what I'm going to do is, let's get a main. <laughs> We'd wait out here. Let's do jump main, and that's going to just allow me to not accidentally jump into parts of the program code that aren't part of my program. Uh, and then in here, we'll put our for loop. So let's do for one, and this is, we'll do two of these four examples. But here's what I'm gonna do. You're making the for loop. First and foremost, let's create the loop variable. You have an option here. You can you are programming an assembly, so you can create a loop variable using you know a register, or you can do it using a piece of memory. Why don't we just use a register since the MSP430 has so many? So let's move uh, pound zero into R4. That instruction is the equivalent of what this is right here. So I is equal to zero, that's the loop variable. I've decided that I will be the variable I and C is gonna be <clears throat> a register in my program, okay. 
Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the loop and the way, even though that these, uh, even though that these, uh, okay, so here we go. We're gonna come down here and I wanna create something that's gonna do my logic here. So let's do, uh, what it, this this whole, this thing is like var one is equal to i so all that is uh, move dot w and I want to move my loop variable which is in r four into var one okay and now here comes the logic to check whether this loop is done or not so I'm gonna do inc r four <clears throat> so that's the equivalent of i is equal to i plus one and then I'm gonna compare it to pound four and then I'm going to say jump if not zero back to four one and what will happen is that this will then repeat this and we'll just call this and <clears throat> this will loop through here and if it's equal to four okay so when it increments this the last time to decide whether it's going to go back through the loop. It'll check it against four, and if it is not four, jump if not zero, it will go ahead and pop back here. But if it ever is four, you'll end the loop, okay? All right, and, and this is like putting the logic to check this at the end of the, of the actual statements. You could come up here and do it before then, uh, so you'd increment and then check it. The only issue is that you set the, the loop variable equal to its first value. And the way a for, for loop works is the first time through the loop, it, the loop variable has the value you initialized it with. So in assembly, you kind of have to like initialize it, let it go through the loop once, and that's the first time through, and then you increment it and you check it at the end. Okay, so if this would be like end for one. I'm just putting a label there because uh, no reason, just to, just to show where it is, I won't actually do anything. Okay. So let's fire up a, a debug and watch this thing. All right, of interest to me is I've got R4 as my loop variable, and I'll go ahead and look at my variable bar one in data memory. So I wanna go to data memory, which is at 2000. Uh, there's my data memory, and then I wanna come up here, and I wanna look at R4, and we'll go ahead and that's already in decimal. Okay, so I'm ready to roll here. Let's go, boom, set a breakpoint, run to it. And we're gonna walk through this. <clears throat> this functionality is, is what we're implementing right now. Okay, number one, we are going to initialize the loop variable and use it the first time through. So when I assign i to var one, that is the same as moving r4 into var one. And if I do it, var one was updated with zero. Not a big deal. Then I increment r4, see how it incremented. You compare it with four, that then sets or clears the z bit so let me open that up and i should be able to see our force so now the z bit is it's not set it's not zero so go ahead and do this loop again so it's going to go back up here <clears throat> and it will then uh notice that our, this time through r4 is one so then that's what the assignment to var one was go ahead and increment it again compare it to four no it's not four yet go ahead and go back up here and let's stuff that in var one so now look at var two is incremented to two, not incremented, it got what, what got the loop variable. So then you come down here, increment it again, compare it against four. If it's not equal to four, let's do it again. So r four is now, the loop variable is three this time. So I go ahead and assign it. And now it's gonna, here's increment it, compare it to four. Oh boy, it is four. So go ahead and get out of this loop. So then you exit that loop. So what we saw there was that the loop variable went from zero, one, two, three, and the last time through, when it incremented to go to its next value, it said, nah, you're out of my range, so I'm out of this loop. The whole time we were actually able to access the loop variable because we were assigning it to another variable that was in, mem in memory, okay? The big thing for you when you program an assembly is just remember, your loop variable is, it's up to you where you put it, okay? When you program in C, the compiler kind of decides where to put it. Uh, but you're programming, uh, you can put it wherever you want. <clears throat> Let's do one more uh, just to show that you can do different alter, different kind of manipulations of the loop variable. So let's come down here and do for two and let's see here. Let me do a comment to separate these two. And then here we are. Okay, 
So we're going to implement this logic. The only difference here is I'm setting up a loop variable again. It's i, uh, but we're going to start it at 10, and then I'm going to decrement it by 2, and just to show you can do this. Uh, and then in this one, we will do it as long as i is greater than or equal to 0. All right, so just like last time, let's go ahead and move 10 into our loop variable. We can Let's use the same variable since we're done with this this for loop up here, let's go ahead and just reuse our four. So then in this implementation, I'm going to do this assignment, which is var one gets i. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move r four into var one, no big deal. And now let's do the logic to check whether to edit or alter the loop variable, check whether it's still in range and decide whether we exit the loop or stay in it. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, <clears throat> I need to decrement this by two. Boy, check this out. D, E, C, D. Deck double R4. Remember that? That was a handy one. So I went ahead and did that. Now I just got to check to make sure that I is greater than or equal to zero. <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to mess with R4, but I want to set the flags. So check out this one. Test R4. I am basically going to subtract zero from R4, not edit all four, not alter it but I will set the flags accordingly so that I can do a conditional jump. And the jump that I want to do is jump if greater than or equal up to four, two. And that's this instruction right here actually matches exactly what you would think. You would say, is the loop variable greater than or equal to zero? Now I did a test because R4, uh, I did a test because it, it basically does R4 minus zero. I could have done this one. I could have done comp, dot w and then pound zero uh, r4. That would have been the same in, uh, instruction or the same logic as that, but I just decided to use a test because we haven't done one of those before. Okay, fire that one up and let's watch this. The only difference here is now the second for loop is going to, oh, I got an error. No way, where's my error? Oh, you can't mow it, you gotta move it. Ha, <laughs> all right, so I got that fixed. Go ahead and fire this thing up again. Uh, here we go. All righty. Let's, let's skip our first for loop example because we already did that. And we'll go right down to here. I've got, uh, I want to see the Z flag and R4. And I can see my spot in memory. And so I'm going to run to it. And here we go. Initialize the loop variable. It went to 10 this time, just like the for loop said. And now what I'm going to do is assign that to memory. It went in there as, as hex. That's fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and decrement it by two. The loop variable went down to two or went down to eight. And that's going to test it. All that does is set the uh, flags in there. And then if it's greater than or equal, go ahead and repeat. And the answer is it is. So then do it again. Notice the loop variable is six this time. Then do it again. Notice this time it's four. Do it again. This time it's two. And then it's going to do this last one, greater than or equal. It is equal, so it is done, okay? Because when I subtracted it, it went from 0 to essentially negative 2. And so then it was not greater than or equal to 0, and I was done, okay? So I, I did two for loop examples. Uh, you kind of get used to doing it in assembly the same, the same way. Okay, that is it. Nice work. You just did a for loop. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel so you stay up to date on all the latest videos. Goodbye.